Inside the box of every cereal box contains a surprise gift. The store manager assures employees that 16 of the 57 boxes on the shelf have a secret decoder ring. And inside the 41 boxes on the shelf contain a different gift. If two, bo two cereal boxes are randomly selected from the, from the shelf to purchase, what is the probability that both will have a decoder ring? So this is an and problem because they're talk they want to know the probability of two consecutive events happening. The first event is the first box containing the decoder ring. And the second event is that the second box will, will have contain the decoder ring. So you could say, let A be the event, or I'm gonna use capital A like they, that they like to. That um, the event, the first box has a decoder ring. And let B be the event that the second box has a decoder ring. Now that they're not saying like, what is the probability of either the first box or the second box containing the ring? You know, then that would be an or problem. But um, this one is contained, is, is asking to, what's the probability of them both? These both have to have the decoder rings, right? So um, the, the equation for this is P of A and B is equal to the probability of A normally times the probability of B. If they're two independent events, that means if the probability of B doesn't change um, based on the fact that A happened. But because the word they're saying it's, uh, you don't think about it too much here, but like when you take two cereal boxes, you kind of have to take one first and the second one, and they're taking them both home, they're not replacing them. So this is definitely, this, they're not independent events. The, the first box having a ring is going to mean that the second, there's a less likelihood for the second box also to have a ring. So really we, we have to do the probability of B occurring such that A occurred. So the probability of that first box has a decoder ring is the number of boxes of the decoder ring. So that's 16. The 16 of the boxes have a decoder ring. So 16 out of the total 57. The probability that the first box will have a decoder ring is 16 out of 57. Then the probability that the, that the second box will have a decoder ring knowing the first one we chose already had a decoder ring. Well, now there's one less decoder ring there or box with a decoder ring in it at least. So now you have 15 boxes left with decoder rings. And then you also have less of the boxes on the shelf completely. So it's 15 out of 56 is going to be your probability for the second one, um, getting a decoder ring as well. And so now we just have to multiply this across 16 times 15. Normally, um, what you can also do is you can cross cancel too, like before we multiply, but let's just do 16 times 15. is 240 over 57 times 56. Let's just do this again. 57 times 56, 3192. 
And then we just have to turn that into a decimal and make sure it's correct three decimal places. So it's 240, 240 divided by 3192. And I get this 0 0.7518. And um, so they want to be accurate to three decimal places. Well, give, it, give a decimal correct to at least, oh, to at least, it could be more. You probably put this answer in as is because they want just at least three decimal places of correctness. So um, I would put four. Let's just leave it at these four. And oops, I totally left a decimal place out of there. I, got, I left the, um, the zero, oops. Sorry about that. So like, um, it's 0 0.075. And they just want three decimal places there. So like, um, we could put all these decimals in, I'm sure, and be fine. Or we could just put these last three and round into three decimal places. It would have been, um, it would have been, this one is less than five. or So it's, um, I would have just truncated off those last two decimals and point, point and then zero. Seven, five, and there we go. That's our answer. All right, thanks. Bye.